In this box, we have something that every fish keeper should be familiar with, but also something which I have never seen before. We are, of course, looking at the Heiger Acrylic Disc Nano Airstone set. This is definitely something I have never had experience with. Of course, I've used airstones before, but I've never used one that looks quite like this. So I haven't actually opened this box yet. It's been sitting around in my shed for a while. And I've been meaning to take a look at it. And this is my first look at it with you guys. Remove the packaging. And we have a very nicely packaged little airstone. But look, what is that? That is not an airstone as far as I'm concerned. I've never seen anything quite like this at all. And I wasn't expecting it to be this different. If you know what a regular airstone looks like, it's usually either a large ball if you've got a pond or a small cylinder or something similar made of a very porous hard material let's air through this however is not like that at all it's got a lot of fingerprints on it so obviously it's been handled a lot by the manufacturer so this particular air stone is made of acrylic discs we can see the brand there Higa or Higer as I think they're supposed to be pronounced we've got two um, discs connected to each other with a little gasket in the middle um, I believe the air comes around the outside here and then we've got two holes here maybe air comes from there as well I don't know we'll have a look in a minute and then we have our air connection obviously there's a screw there which means that I guess we could change this if it gets blocked or damaged perhaps even get one that's got a larger tube diameter in the manual we can see that there are three different sizes this particular model I've got here is the 80 millimeter one um, goes down to 45 so basically half almost half the size of this one here's some of the facts from the manual if you want to read them you can pause the video um, obviously not that interesting I don't really read manuals very often back to this though this is interesting what else do we have in the box we have a one-way valve and a little suction cup that's quite nice a little um, addition there just to stop water flowing back into your air pump and we have a little prong you might be wondering why we've got a little tweezery prong thing in the box i'll show you in a moment underneath here i'm assuming there's something there is yes we have a really nicely spooled bit of airline that i'm actually more impressed with this than anything else in this box because normally when you get a bit of airline in, a, in an air pump or of an air stone it's just um sort of wrapped up in a figure of eight with an elastic band or a zip tie around the middle but this is a little a really cute little cardboard spool that is amazing i don't even know how to process that that is the best thing i've ever seen let's take a look at this airstone in more detail then as i've already mentioned we've got two rings of acrylic now you might think that is a weird point but acrylic is pretty much inert which means we can put this in either salt water or we can put it into fresh water whereas regular air stones you can only really put them into fresh water because of how they react with salt water in salt water you tend to use wooden air stones up until this point secondly we have a metal weight in there i'm assuming it's weight because it's really quite heavy i've just weighed it this whole air stone is 143 grams which is actually quite hefty i'm assuming that is just to keep it on your substrate rather than it floating around once it's got air inside of it thirdly we can also use our little tongs on here to open it up and maintain it now i've never done this before this is exactly the first time so i'm going to do it with you i'm assuming it goes anti-clockwise and actually the whole thing moves i was expecting the inner ring to move so let's see what happens when we unscrew the whole thing of course it's got a slight thread on the inside there you can see here's the thread so that it screws onto the inner bit of acrylic we have a little gasket here not sure what material that is I think it's just like a compressed foam that obviously can be replaced what we can't access though I don't think let me take these tongs out is this inner ring that seems to be fixed so that inner gasket there you can't change but I doubt you'll need to unless I'm just going to guess here we might have just scratched it as well maybe no I don't think that unscrews oh it does wow this is almost like a little puzzle actually I'm really enjoying this so we can remove the central disc 
And again, if we need to, we can replace this in a gasket. Let me just put it all back together. You can hand tighten it to a certain degree. And we'll just do the final tighten with the tongs or the prongs or whatever you want to call them. So that's quite cool. And then we'll move on to this part. So the metal weight does indeed come out. It does look just like a bit of steel. I'm assuming it's stainless. Otherwise, once you put this into salt water, it might just go a little bit rusty. Um, the bottom bit of foam can be removed. Yeah, it does feel like foam. So just pop that back in there. And then finally, I think the last thing to take apart is the um, air connector here. It has got an interesting little screw on there. Not really sure what that's for. So we'll just, if I can, without completely damaging it. So you might have noticed here, I've absolutely butchered this screw. So the screw just goes through the air line connector. I think it must be like a little hollow screw or something because the air will actually go through and pass into the screw. Um, it's actually quite difficult to get out. So I'm just gonna leave it where it is rather than just completely destroy this air diffuser. But that's basically how it all comes apart. It's pretty interesting, isn't it? On the face of it, it's quite a simple design, but in fact, it feels quite novel when it comes to air diffusers. We'll put it all back together. Now you might note that I'm calling it an air diffuser, and that's because I don't really class this as an air stone, because there's nothing stone about it. I imagine Heiger or Higger have called this an air stone set merely because it matches what people would be searching for. If you call it an air diffuser, you'll probably end up with people getting to this who are looking for stuff for their home rather than their aquarium. Whereas if you call it an air stone, then you're going to be getting that, then you're going to be getting those aquarium searches, aren't you? So although it's not an air stone, I imagine that's why it's called one. The next test is going to actually to hook this up to an air pump and see how it performs. I'm going to be using my um, battery powered night crew air pump. Now this is at 1.7 W. The box or the manual did say a minimum of two. So this might not be a very good test. However, I don't have another air pump available at the moment. This is the most powerful one I have. So we'll see how this works, but please note, it's a little bit underpowered for this particular air, air diffuser. I'm also not gonna use this airline because I think it looks too cute on this little spool. I'm just going to use some regular airline. It's exactly the same diameter as the one it was supplied with, um, but I've obviously already used it, hence the water inside. So let me get it all set up, and then we'll carry on with the test. All right, we'll plonk the air stone in here. There we go, right in front of the camera. So you can see it sinks straight to the bottom, which is quite nice. A lot of other air stones, they require using... Um, suction cups or other bits and pieces to keep them submerged, not this one, it's straight to the bottom. And we'll just turn it on now with this Night Crew air pump. And there we go, that's at max power. Actually that's not too bad, that's pretty cool isn't it? You can see, and this is not something that I was expecting, but it is in the manual, I did read it, we've got two concentric rings of air. So we've got one around the outside, and then one on the inside and that would explain why we've got two different rings of that gasket and I guess those gaskets are made of uh, foam because they do require holes to let the air through so there we go that is a really attractive air diffuser we've got our outer ring we've got our inner ring you could I guess if you have one of those LED spotlights you could put one of those onto here and you get a really cool effect going through these bubbles because it's not like a regular air stone where you just have a little circular disc or a little circular ball with some air coming out of it. This is actually really different. Now I will admit this is a little bit underpowered. With a more powerful air pump, you would get obviously more bubbles. You would have a faster flow of air as well. But I think it's actually doing a reasonable job, this battery powered air pump. And it is showing how this air diffuser works. Of course, if we wanted to, I guess we could bury this slightly as well to have it in the substrate then you wouldn't have such a large profile in your aquarium but other than that I think this is actually really cool it's not what I was expecting at all I will, I will tell you now that Higger did send me this to have a look at I didn't pay for it 
but I haven't been paid to review it or anything. It was just sent to me to just take a look at. Probably one of the reasons why it's taken me so long to get round to it. But personally, I do think that this is a pretty interesting and different little air diffuser. Definitely not the sort of thing that you are used to, especially me. I've never seen one quite like this. Do let me know below in the comments what you think about this. Obviously, it's just an air diffuser at the end of the day, so it's nothing particularly uh, groundbreaking, but it is a different take on the Airstone. So, very interesting. I like to see companies coming up with new ideas. This one certainly is impressive. Obviously, if you've got the smaller disc, you could run it off the air pump that I'm using. I'll probably keep this on hand to use it for any emergencies with my little air pump there. If I need to oxygenate an aquarium, if my power goes out or whatever, this will be ideal for that situation. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, obviously click some buttons below. So once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.